me into a good fish straight away. I'm at Pisces Caravan Park today making a program on my waggler fishing secrets. Just all the bits and pieces that I've learned about waggler fishing over the years. And I began by putting a few balls of ground bait out just to get some fish round. And after two or three casts, I'm into this fish. Feels like a, yeah, it's a good, good, pre, good for him. This is one of the species that I hope to catch today. The lake I'm fishing is the small lake. It's a, a mixed fishery here, mixed species, but it hasn't got any big carp. It's crucian carp, tench, bream, roach, rudd, loads of lovely silverfish, so an ideal venue lake to try to to catch these <laughs> there just a, that's a lovely bream about two pounds just a, a few balls in there to get it started there's a fish straight away now Pisces is um, close to the village of Welney and it's right on the Norfolk Cambridgeshire border really in the heart of the fens it's very flat very windy around here normally Oh, it's a great fish to start with. It's mid-July, but fairly, fairly cold. You know, not, not as hot as it could be. Well, I'm wearing short sleeves. But that's a good start. Fishing a, a sort of three, four AA waggler over towards those lilies. Try that again. and. I noticed when I first started, the hardest thing was there's some small rudd up near the surface, so I've, I've tried to bolt my shot down to get through them. It's, it's fairly shallow anyway. It's only about sort of four foot deep. So I'm just casting out by those lilies over there and hoping that it's going to get through the small fish. I've put three maggots on to start with. And it looks like a small fish has picked it up. Can you see how that float is going across at an angle? I'm going to leave it for a minute. Just hopefully it's going to settle. Maybe it's just left it. Some of the rudd near the surface are really tiny and they're a bit of a nuisance. But as long as it gets to the bottom, then I've got a chance of catching, like with that last one, a bigger fish. And there the float goes. Missed that bite. But I'm sure, well I know, there's, there's lots of fish. It's a brilliant fishery, so there's lots of fish to catch. I'll try that again, just three more maggots on. The main thing is getting that bait to the bottom. It's, only a, it's a nice, easy cast out to where I'm fishing. Ah, oh, small fish is taking it. I'm going to try and leave it though. As the float went in and it settled, if you watch the float now, you'll see it's there. Yeah, I think it's a tiny fish. Can be a big fish. Well, no, it's a bit a bit bigger than I thought, but not not a massive fish. This is this is a rud, not rud or a roach. Yeah, a small rud. But there's some even tinier than that. They're not too bad, that's two or three ounces. Isn't it? A beautiful looking fish. I'll just show you that, that fish. I'll unhook it first, really, because I let it take the maggots down, but really is a beautiful, perfectly formed, red tinge fins, bright red, and the, the top lip just receding a bit, and, and a gold, really gold looking, on the top, greeny gold back. About two ounces, but it, it's up in the water. Where I threw that ground bait, there's lots of smaller fish milling around, but there'll be some bigger fish below them. Let me show you the ground bait mix I used. You know I said I put some balls in earlier. Let me just show you the mix I used, and I'm going to feed again. I'm going to show exactly how to feed, how to cast a waggler, and where to put the balls of ground bait around your float.
We're going to be fishing for bream, skimmers and roach today. So the ground bait that I've picked, two of my favourites, this one is particularly my favourite, which is Super Lake. And for roach and bream, it's brilliant. Probably only need about half a bag of this, I think. Don't need a full, I'm just going to throw a few balls in, so half a bag of that. No sense wasting it if you're not going to use it. I sort of start balling it in at the beginning and then loose feed over the top, so I'm not going to use a lot of ground bait. And then this one, which is a particularly a bream ground bait. So some of that, 50% of that as well. Nice sweet ground bait. A little bit darker in texture than the other one. Half of that. Mix the dry contents together. There's not much there, so in total there's about a kilo there. I've been, just lately, when I've been fishing in Ireland, I've been using this a lot to catch, to catch my bream. It's uh, liquid sweet molasses, and I find it really good, so. Just squirt some of that in the water. It's really black, and it has a beautiful, I mean, it's sugar, really. And bream love anything sweet. That's, you can see the, the almost the colour of that look. Just the. Lovely. Can't drink it though. As you pour the water onto the ground bait, really agitate the ground bait with one hand. I usually do it with my left hand while you're pouring with the other so that the water gets really mixed in as much as you can. And I want to make this mix so it's so that I can mix a fairly firm ball and throw it in to go to the bottom without too much cloud coming off. Too much cloud would probably attract those small fish, so. Yeah. I'm only gonna put, I've already put some feed in, so I'll just probably put two or, th two or three more balls on top. That feels quite good already. That feels just about, I can make a good ball, pretty firm, feels about right. It will dry out quickly, but I'm going to be throwing it in fairly quickly, so it doesn't matter. Just a touch more, a touch more for luck. If you want to deter the smaller fish, make the ground bait a little bit wetter, so there's not too much cloud coming off. If you want to attract small fish, then make it fairly dry. And then I'll just use a, this is a maggot riddle. It's got fairly large diamond mesh there to get rid of those larger lumps. It's well worth doing it, only, t only takes a second to do it. Just get rid of, run that through, and you can see those larger lumps already on the top, but they're, they're, you don't need to discard them, just rub them through. Just gently with your hand, rub all those through. They're the slightly wetter parts of the ground bait. And then you get a really, once you've done that, you just get a really, even texture with the water distributed all the way through the ground bait and you can squeeze it. Then I'm going to add some fish meal pellets. These uh, skimmers and bream love fish meal pellets. So I'm going to put, these are fairly small. Look, they're two, two millimetre. So they're tiny pellets. I'm going to put some of those in as well. Pellets really are just compressed ground bait. So this is sort of a fish mealy addition to the ground bait. Put those in. Just mix them round. So you've got some hardish parts. Let me put that through there. You can just see them, but in amongst that ground bait, you'll have some very, very small pieces of pellet, hard pellets. So when it goes to the bottom, the bream will be able to come round and pick out these small micro pellets, looking also hopefully and getting on to the hook bait.
That's exactly how I started this morning. Just to, I put a few more balls on that and didn't want to add too many more to it. And I also added a few maggots and a bit of sweet corn to the mix. So it went in with a nice plop down to the bottom, just to try and get those bigger fish into the area. I'm loose feeding over the top as well, but the problem here is there's so many fish. My hands are filthy with that ground bait. There's so many small fish here that intercept the baits if, if you're loose feeding, so. If you want to get something to the bottom, you have to use a bit of ground bait, ball it in so it goes down plomp on the bottom. Hopefully for those bigger fish like that, that bream that I caught right at the start. Three maggots, so a big bait. I've just fed, so it might be, usually what happens when you've just fed is you get quite a few uh, smaller fish around, even though the bait's gone to the bottom. Fish are always attracted by noise. Oh, that's gone, that's gone down though. I love it when I see my bait go down. I'm fishing with a, a straight waggler there. So it's got a fair size tip on it. I wanted to get some weight down and through, through the small fish. Little bite there straight away though on the bottom. Usually if you get a bite on the bottom, it's gonna be, gonna be a slightly better fish. The bream in particular, they're bottom feeders. There's another little bite there now. Bottom feeders, I missed that one. They're, the bream are bottom feeders, so you need to get on the bottom to catch them. Might have been a small fish, it didn't even damage the bait, that one. So a biggish bait. You can see it's fairly shallow. It's nice, easy cast to those, just to the corner of those lilies. <laughs> Little fish then took it straight on the drop. There's loads of those there. It's very, it's a brilliant water to fish. It's so prolific. So many different species of fish. That you never know what you're going to hook. And note the cast, a nice easy cast. I just trap the line there with my finger on the spool. So, and then if you look at where you're fishing, just and keep the rod straight as you cast, just cast dead straight through, then you'll find that the waggler will go in that direction. As long as you keep the rod vertical and a nice easy cast. The hardest bit is, is getting the release exactly right. It's something that you you have to, you sort of learn with practice. It's when your finger comes off the spool. I can talk about it easily. And there's another little fish now. Little tiny one, that. These are ones that are pestering me. It's just when that, when you release that, and it's something that you, you have to try a few times to get the timing right. Just when, as you, I won't, I'll slip that fish straight back. It's so small. It's just getting the timing right as you release the line, when to release it, that gives you, gives you the distance on the cast and the accuracy. And if you wind, if I wind this, this reel now, look to where the float is from the tip. Just look to where the float, that's about right. You don't want to be up here. Don't want that, you don't have any control. And you don't either want to be down there, you have no control there. So something probably like just about a metre or perhaps a bit less than a metre. And then a nice, smooth, steady through, like that, over the ground baited area. To sink the line, I've just put the chip under the water. Oh, there's another little fish there straight away. Probably have to wait until this, this ground bait that I put in, until it settles down. Watch how I sink the line. Because you need to sink the line, especially when it's windy. If the wind is catching your line and moving it around, it moves the float unnaturally. We're fishing in a still water, which means that the bait is not really, shouldn't be moving. And the only thing that can move it is, is the wind on your line. So you have to just sink your line when it's really windy. Nice, smooth cast again. 
plonk. Put your tip under the water and then just a flick. A flick. Oh, <laughs> little fish took that straight away. I couldn't even tighten up on it. And then just a flick. I caught that fish as I sunk the line. It grabbed hold of it and as I sunk the line, I caught that fish. As I say, it's just because I fed again. I fed and it just takes a little while for that to, to settle down. I've not even had a chance to loose feed yet. Every time I cast out the floats going. Just get that cast right, it's a nice overhead flick. Always in the same direction. There's lots of small fish there at the moment. Another one there, I'm trying to leave it so that the line gets to the bottom. But it won't, it won't leave it. <laughs> but this is normal waggler fishing. You normally catch everything from top to bottom. It's another one of those lovely little rud. Beautiful fish. They really are in superb condition. It took three maggots. Three maggots on a big hook as well. Let's have a look at the rig I'm using today. I'm using quite a big hook today. This is, this is a fox, it's a new series, a carp. It's a carp match series, a size 18, but, but really it's about the size of a normal 14. So it's quite a big hook where I can get three maggots, a pellet or a bit of sweet corn on. The, the, the line itself is, it's this one, it's a Fox Micro Plus 0.14 millimeter, which is probably about, well, it's quite strong, probably about four pound breaking strain. And then the real line is 016, so it's quite, just a little bit thicker, just a little bit stronger line. Just, just up from the hook length, not far, probably nine inches up, I've put three little shots close together. Three number nine, these are called stots. They're like an elongated shot, but very, very soft. I like to use them. I'll just pull them apart so you can see that they're, they are separate, but I, I bolt the three together fairly close to the hook, trying to get my bait through these smaller fish. And then 18 inches from the hook, I've got a tiny, tiny barrel swivel. Can you see that? Now I'll fix that to the, to the, to the barrel swivel with, a, with a, a tucked half blood. You put it through, you twist it round five times, but you must tuck it to stop it from slipping. So that's the real, the real line and the hook line is attached to that little swivel. When, you, when you're fishing a waggler, especially at distance and you're coming back with maggots on the hook, they spin round, so that barrel swivel stops the fine hook length from twisting up. And then I've got a big block of those number nine stots again. I've got about nine there. So it's like a fair, fairly big weight to try and get through those small fish. Now the, the float itself, I've just got a waggler attachment on there. Now that is just a T-bar waggler attachment. So the line goes through here. Let me pull that off for you. And there's a piece of silicon that goes over there like that and there. These are brilliant. Your line doesn't get damaged. You don't need to put shot either side of your line. Your line doesn't get damaged. You can adjust the depth easily, but it's still tight so it doesn't move when you're fishing. I've put a little bit of load on that waggler. I don't like a load of shot on the line. If you're fishing a waggler, you really want to keep the shot on the line down to a, a, a minimum and most of the weight, this is a loaded waggler, most of the weight is in the waggler itself. This particular one is a three treble A, it's a, a straight waggler, straight peacock waggler, fairly short, but nice for sitting baits on the bottom, biggish baits on the bottom and waiting for your bites. And that's, that's a simple setup so that we've got no problems there with the with shots, normally 
and, and, and in the past, that's how we used to fix floats. We used to put shots either side of the line, and when you're catching fish, the shots move, they damage the line. These new attachments, this particular one is, is, is called a Creluso. It's a, a Hungarian float maker. He, make, he started making flat floats, but he's also just brought out these brilliant waggler attachments. I just love to use them. You can fish all day with this sort of rig without any muck-ups at all. Nice. I'm gonna wait, hopefully my float's gonna to get to the bottom. If it gets to the bottom, I'll get a big fish. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a fish every cast, but it's amazing. This, oh, that one came off. The, uh, the hook is so big, it's not really made for those small fish. But they're onto that bait straight away. I'm gonna put a big bait on in a minute and sit and wait. If I put a piece, if I get bitted out too much, I'm gonna put a piece of sweet corn on. Let's just try, the, the thing is, if it gets to the bottom, maggot will get me bites quicker. But if it won't, won't get to the bottom, I'll have to just change that bait. Just have to change that bait a little bit. Trying to get close, fairly close to those lilies. Hoping there's some big fish in there. There's a few good tench here as well. Whether we'll catch those today or not, I don't know. Ah. Maybe I've got to the bottom. Now I've got some four mil, four millimeter fish mill pellets also that I'm gonna loose feed around. And I'm too, normally I'd probably feed maggots, but there's so many small fish, I'm frightened that if I loose feed maggots around there, I'm gonna bring even more small fish into the area. So I'm trying to eliminate the smaller rud, hopefully and loose feed some of these larger pellets. As I said earlier, bream love fish meal pellets. So do the tench. So I'm on the bottom now and at least when it's on the bottom then I can wait for that bigger fish to come along. Just look, wait until it finds, there's a little bite then, just started, just started to run a little bit. It's almost, you get slower bites when you're on the bottom. When you're catching on the drop, the fish are racing around looking for bait as it falls through the water. When you're on the bottom, the fish are just, particularly the bream, they're just nosing around, eating away at the free offerings. You've got to wait until they come across your bait. So slightly more of a waiting game when you're on the bottom, but the rewards are greater because you get bigger fish. feels like a slightly better fish again. It's just a matter of getting that bait to the bottom. Once it's on the bottom, then you'll catch these larger fish. Not a big fish, but just one of the fish that we're after today, I think. It's a lovely little, it's what we call a, a skimmer. If you look at that slime, just near that one. Oh, yes. The skimmer is a small bream. This one's about, that's a good size fish, probably about 10 ounces, so it's a nice fish. Lovely, beautiful. Once again in, in perfect condition. Lovely, real, in this case, black tip fins. Really black tip fins. If you just look at the, just this top part of the fish, see that slight recess in the head? That's a good sign of a bream as well, and deep and silvery on the bottom. Once you get on the bottom, then they're the sort of fish that you can catch. And that slime, when you get that slime on your line, make sure you take it off. Fish don't like it left on there. I usually pull it all off, clean that completely. Oh, it's just started to rain, you know. 
It was a beautiful sunny day about 30 minutes ago and now it's clouded over and it's raining. Just a few spits of rain though, not too much. Well, they don't go off in cricket when it's like this, just a slight drizzle, so you know, I can carry on and fish. Probably put my jacket on in a minute though, if it keeps like this. Try that three maggots again. There's another better fish. Just coming round, I mean, I, it wasn't long since I last fed, so it takes a while for the fish. It takes a while for the fish to come round again. Really, what I did was I put some ground bait in early, then I put some more. The fish had started to come, I think, and, and, and then I put some more ground bait on top, so that, that never helps. It's got to the bottom this time, though, over that ground baited area. Just loose feed a few pellets. Fishing is always, always about feeding. Just get the fish there, feeding on the bait that you're putting in. Get them interested in feeding. And then you have a good chance of catching them. I just saw a little swirl on the top as I fed that, that first lot of pellet then, which means that, that some rudd have come in right up for those pellets. I'm trying to attract the fish as well by just the noise of the pellets going and hitting the water. The fish can hear that and they think, ah, food. Any noise, they relate it to food always. Sometimes it scares them a little bit at first and they turn away, but then, then they come back in looking to catch those bream and skimmers. Oh, look at the float really lifted then. That is a typical, I'm going to strike that. That was a typical, I missed it, but that was a typical bream bite. It really lifted the bottom shot, took them right up. That was a typical bream bite. That's exactly how they feed. They take the bait off the bottom, then lift up, and it lifted up those dropper shot. The float sort of came right out of the water. So there's plenty of fish coming round now. It's a bit specialised really because I'm trying to avoid the small fish, wanting to fish with maggot because that's getting me more bites once it gets to the bottom. A little bit later on there's a good chance of catching on pellet and corn but when you first begin usually maggots get you more bites. Everything eats maggots. But loose feeding pellet because I put some maggot in the bottom, so there's some maggots in, in, in the ground bait, so the fish are used to taking them, but loose feeding pellet to try perhaps to keep the, the bigger fish there and deter the small rud. Just round the float area. Don't know how I missed that last bite, it was really a lovely bite. I can start to see now, even though it's raining a little bit, I can start to see one or two bubbles fizzing coming up. That's fish feeding. That's fish feeding in the ground baited area. And once you see that, then you know you're going to catch. to another fish now, I don't know what it is. Quite a decent one though. Just on the bottom again, but I've caught a lot of fish on the bottom, so as I'm feeding, I can see there's, oh, looks like a, oh, looks like a big roach. As I'm feeding, I can see little signs that the fish are right up near the surface. Oh, it's, Oh, we've had everything now. Roach, rudd, skimmers and bream. I can see little signs that there's fish up near the surface. So when... Let's get this... Oh, what a beautiful roach. Oh, that's a lovely fish. Once we get this fish in the net, I'll change the rig over and then start to fish up nearer the surface to see what sort of fish there are there with perhaps pellet, perhaps maggot. I'll see how it goes, but... Here's a, 
perfect example. That is a beautiful roach. I'll just unhook it. There. And that is the perfect example of a roach. The fins are orange tinged, in perfect condition, probably half a pound, so a lovely fish. Greenish back, not quite as deep and as golden as the rud, but they look, they're probably a fairly similar looking fish. And the top lip is not receding, it's, it's in front, so you can see it's a roach. Beautiful orange eyes with, with the centre jet black, but a perfect example of a roach. Let's change that rig over and go fishing on the surface. I've changed the rig quite a bit for fishing up in the water. I've put a smaller hook on. It's just a fine wire red maggot hook. The line is 012, which is probably about two pound breaking strain. I've got a short hook length, about 10 inches, with one small shot, one number 10 stot lead. On, on, I've put it on the hook length so I can move it up and down, move it nearer to the hook if I want to. And then here I've just got a very, very small knot. This is a I call it a twisted figure of eight. It's a special knot that I use, a small one. I haven't put a swivel in this time. I'm fishing up near the surface. I want the bait to drop really slowly and the extra weight of the swivel may bring it through the water a little bit quicker. And I'll probably be fishing with a single maggot which doesn't twist the line up too much. Then the main line, I'm still on, on sort of five pound main line. All I did was unclip the float. I had this float on which was was about a, a 4BB and I've just switched it over now to a 3BB, smaller float, but this float also has got an insert. It's for fishing on the drop so it's a slimmer top to it so that I can see that final little drop and hopefully see the fish take the bait which you can much easier so it's more sensitive. And I've put some shots here just under their stock leads, just under this this adapter, but these are only just to, to take the weight of the float up, so it's so it balance, just to balance the float. They're doing nothing. If I want to, I can pull them down, but realistically, when you're fishing up in the water, you really want as, as sort of light a lead as possible dropping through. Let's start with a single maggot. I think there's a few fish out there, so when there's a lot of fish about, a single maggot on the hook, then it's best, particularly if you're catching up in the water, so that you're getting bites without any, any sort of waiting period, then it's best to feed. If you get really getting bites quick, it's best to feed first. So catapult your maggots out first. Put a couple of small pouchfuls because I've been, been chatting away, so a couple of pouchfuls of maggots. Already I see signs of of one or two fish about near the surface, and then just cast your bait in that same area. Just watch the float, there's one little shot going down and a bite straight away. Didn't hit that bite, so I just flicked into it and left it, left it. Sometimes you get another bite straight away. Didn't take, it might have taken my maggot, it did. Took my maggot, that fish, that one bite took my maggot. This sort of fishing is all action usually. Fishing up in the water, you're feeding all the time. To, to keep the fish up in the water, you have to keep feeding. They're only there because you're feeding them all the time. So a few maggots, pouch out, nice spray, just in that general area where you're fishing. And then you try to drop your bait on the top, I don't usually, it's usually so much action, I don't even, normally don't even need to sink your line. And I'm into a fish there. It's a better fish straight away. I don't know what it is. Not a massive fish, but 
probably a nice rud or roach, just on the drop, really fight well. Still good enough to, it's a lovely one, just about, just about swing this. It's a lovely big rud. I should really net it, shouldn't I? Oh, what if that hook pulls out? Oh, really took a chance there, but a lovely, lovely big rud. Let me turn it round and you can see where the maggot, it's actually shattered blood, really sucked all the juice out of that maggot in seconds, just as it fell through the water. I'll unhook him. You can really see the receding lip on, the, on this rud and the, the beautiful bronze green tinge. So that's a surface feeding fish. Probably the most, most likely fish, when you're fishing up in the water, that you can catch, although roach will come up in the water as well. A single maggot. I don't, I know that I haven't got time to feed because it's all action. So feed first, bait up, feed, get that. Ideally, those maggots have now hit the water and you want to, you want yours to go and sort of be falling through the water at about the same time. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit after. Just leave the line on the top this time. Just looking for the bite, letting that maggot, there's the bite, into that fish again. Another good fish. Just letting it drop slowly through. Did you notice a strike? I just sort of, a sideways sweep into the fish. Another good rud. Just a little bit smaller than that last one, but still a lovely fish. Oh, the sun's come out now, which is good. We've had rain and, and everything this morning. Just need to, they really, they really take the bait down. But another, probably three or four ounces, really big fish. They, they do fight well. Bait up first. So all these little tips, I'm trying to, to give you my waggler secrets, all these little tips about what to do, how to do it, feeding first, going on top, getting, so you imagine those fish, as you fire those maggots, they're coming in and taking all those, all those lovely freebies and enjoying it. And then you're dropping your bait on the top. Because it's, I'm just, just caught up there somewhere. Because it's all action, you can leave, leave your line on the surface, ready to strike. Just leave your line on the surface, and the strike is a sideways, just a sharp sideways movement. I struck then, sometimes you can get away with two, two sort of strikes each cast. So a few fish out there. Go to feed, but I've got to feed again because I want to keep those, I want to keep those bigger fish up in the water competing. The really big fish are the ones that, once they get feeding, the ones that take the bait right near the top, they bully everything else out and take the bait right near the surface. Just a nice little plop. Oh, straight away in. That was an, a little sideways flick to, to hook into the fish. This is all action. Small fish this time. Another small rud. Beautiful, beautiful little fish. Look at those fins. Just bright red, but a perfect example really smash, they obliterate the bait. I mean, I went in there and it went straight away, I struck straight away, but the bait is still smashed. You know, there's that quick on it. Because of this lovely slow drop, I've only got that one, one uh, number 10 stock lead. So it's dropping through the water really, really slowly, trying to, to imitate the same as when you're loose feeding. The same pace. 
that's a good pouch full. And as, as you fish more and more, then more fish come round. Probably loads out there now that you don't, you don't even see them. Just let it drop slowly through the water. Just looking for that. If it doesn't take it, if it doesn't take it on the drop, then come in and recast. Just come in, have another cast. And just do the same again. Come in, cast, recast, and then you just get into the rhythm of catching fish all the time. Knots are so important in fishing. I'll just show you how I tie my, it's a bit like a, a four term water knot, but I call it a twisted figure of eight. I don't really know what the true name of it is. It's for joining two pieces of line together. Normally if you want to, it's, I use it mainly for hook lengths because you have to pull one end through the other. But if you lay the two pieces of line together and form, form a loop. So you've got the two pieces of line, you form a loop. Usually add a little bit of water to that. Just form a loop like that. And then twist it. It's always hard to get it started. Then if you twist your fingers, you get, if you look at it, you see it's twisted below. And all you do is if you trap that twisted part and then through that hole, through that loop, just push, imagine that that end is your hook on there. Just imagine that that end is your hook. Just push that through like that. You'll see in a minute while I call it, why I call it a twisted figure of eight. And then the little tag that's left over from your main line, push that through as well. Get that tucked in, it's just started to rain even harder now. And then if you look at it, you can see, can you see how you, it's a sort of a, like a number eight? Just pull that together. And then trim it off. And it's such a neat knot, so neat. Just trim it off really, it's fairly tight. Sort of one piece. And then two pieces. And you've got such, if you look at that now, you've got such a neat knot, just a tiny, much, much stronger than a four term water knot, but smaller. You can't break it, it's almost as strong as the line itself. So that's what that's how I've attached my hook length. So it's nice and light. It doesn't tangle, it's very, very small. You can attach loop to loop, but it's more bulky and uh, more likely to when you're fishing really shallow like this to get tangles. Catching really well on that single maggot. I always look for a nice big juicy maggot. And if you, if you squeeze the maggot really hard and just, just nick it through as lightly as possible, just to leave the bait moving. And because there's lots of fish, I'm gonna feed first. Probably put a couple of pouchfuls of feed because while I've been tying that knot, the fish have probably dropped back down in the water. So a couple of pouchfuls of feed out. I can see a fish See a fish come to the surface. You can see them boiling now on the surface. I couldn't see that earlier. Let's put another pouch full out for you. You'll see those fish. As I as I fed then, you can see the fish boiling on the surface. Then you know they're up in the water when you can do that. Yeah, see there's one there, it's another one there. As I say, sometimes they're the bigger fish. You just drop your bait in between. You're guaranteed a bite. Leave the line on the top. <laughs> It's a small fish, but straight away into a fish. Probably because I'd stopped feeding, the bigger fish dropped down, so we got to start, get them back again. 
I've got this really little tiny rod that is probably about one ounce. That'd be a big fish on some of our canals and uh, some of the winter league matches that I've fished in the past. You'd be happy with those. Just no time to, f to feed here after you've cast out because the fish are so quick onto the bait. So you must feed first. Good pouch full of maggots and then I'm only fishing about probably 18 inches deep. Straight away the fish are onto it. Missed that bite. Because they're whizzing in and out, they're so quick. Probably lost the maggot then. I felt the, just felt the fish. Yeah, I did lose a maggot. Because the fish are so frantic as, you, as, as you're feeding these, these maggots, you imagine the fish want to get to the bait. They're all competing to get to the bait. But feeding, just keeping this bait going in. And then gradually the bigger fish will come. Small fish as well. You get a mixture of fish fishing like this. Just let it drop down through the water. Don't strike that hard. Just a little, like a little flick into the fish. It's really one of those showery days. One minute we've got sunshine, the next minute it's raining. But of course, fishermen don't mind rain. Usually the fish feed better. Just gonna try one without feeding because there's so many fish there now. Yeah, I need to do a small fish again, but there's lots and lots. Yeah, if I don't feed, then I catch a small fish. So, so really, I've got to pile some feed in. I might even try putting more bait in. Two good pouchfuls. Let's try two good pouchfuls. Whiz it out there. There's quite a few fish there. Even though it's raining, you think, oh, the fish won't come to the surface, but they do. It's no different. You can see the odd fish splashing as the bait goes in. Just dropping my bait on top, looking for that, hoping that the bigger one's going to find it. It's another fish, but small one again this time. There must be loads of fish out there. Another little rud right on the surface. It's a nice fish. Lovely, lovely looking fish. I love these rud. You don't often catch them now. Just don't see them in many waters. Just a beautiful fish. There. Rain's coming down hard. I think I'll, I'll just rest for a little while. Sometimes when you, when you want to catch slightly bigger fish and you're really getting pestered with very small fish on the maggot, then another good thing you can try is use a, a bait band, one of these. Now this is for pellet fishing, for holding the pellet on the hook. So you, you put the bait band on the hook like that. And then you just thread. I've been feeding some of these four mil fish meal pellets. So I'd usually pick out quite a big one to put on, quite a long one. They vary a bit in size. And just if you pull the, just pull the band over the pellet like that. So it leaves the hook completely showing. Just if the fish are really going mad. There is quite a few out there now. Then they just grab for the pellet and you hook them. Because it's a big hard pellet on a band, you don't lose the bait, you know, it doesn't get shredded easy. Just depends what size of fish. For carp, it's brilliant, but sometimes you can catch big roach and rud doing the same. I'll switch the feed into to pellet. Just switch the feed into pellet. Just to get the fish used to just eating some of the pellets. I'm fishing with one exactly the same size I'm feeding, a, 
a four mil, that'll stay on there. Doesn't, of course it won't, won't, get, won't get damaged the same way. Let's see if we can get a bite on it. It won't get damaged the same way as maggots do. They can't smash it exactly the same. Oh, I wonder why I didn't get a bite. It hooked up on, on the only little lily leaf floating about there. I thought, oh, I didn't get a bite that time. You'd, you'd normally get a sign that a fish is there. Just casting out towards those lilies. Leaving the line on top. It's not, not really that windy now, although it's... And because you've got a bit longer, you can, you can feed because you've got a good hard bait on there, see that bite then? Because you've got a good hard bait on there, you can sometimes feed while your float's out there. Oh, I should have struck that one though. Oh, I missed that. It really buried it and was away, so. Took, me, took, took my pellet, that one, which is unusual. It must have been a good fish, that. Actually took my pellet, so at least we're getting some bites on it. But the band stays on just the same, so you can you, quite often you can catch two or three fish on the same pellet. I think these pellets got a bit wet because of that rain and uh, they, might, they might, the band is not, not as tough and staying on as it should be. But there, that's something like that. It's about the right way to put it on. The band around the hard pellet. Just a four mil sinking hard pellet. I was thinking I wasn't going to get so many bites, you know, with the pellet, it'd take a bit longer, but maybe I should have fed. Maybe I should have fed beforehand. Yeah. Just a couple of pouchfuls of feed round the, the float. Won't get as many bites as you would with maggot, but probably the fish would be, if you got one, would be, would be bigger. They seem to be, pref there's the bite. Oh, got the fish. But I said we'd be bigger. Can you believe it's took this little fish? Wow. It's not one of the tiny ones, it's a roach. Whereas we, but it took, just shows you what fish will take a pellet. That's a roach this time. And it took, just flicked off the hook, took that, that four mil banded pellet. And there's a pellet still on there. So we can go straight out again with the same bait. Just whiz it straight out. It's a funny sort of a day. Sometimes there's some wind, sometimes there isn't. Lots, there is, they are taking that pellet now, which is good. Let's just get, just got to get into a sort of a feeding rhythm. Get them, wean them onto the pellets, because they've been taking maggot, remember? Oh, that was a bite, that's a better fish. That's a good fish. Just shows you what I said. Oh, would you believe I lost it? But that was a much, much, big, much bigger fish. Took the pellet, took the band, took everything. But it just shows you that there are some bigger fish there and they will take pellets. That's interesting, that's good. Don't know how I managed to lose that one, but I did. I think it was a big roach or something. It was a good, really good fish. Just slip that. You have to pull that band over the pellet. And leave the hook, leave the hook sort of coming out so that the fish is going to hook itself. That was a good sign. I think I'm going to feed first this time. A couple of pouchfuls and then cast. Because there's quite a few bites even on pellet now. A couple of pouchfuls of pellets. They're four mil fish meal pellets. Then drop the float. Just let it settle. Imagine that pellet dropping through the water, looking for a bite as the fish are, fish are whizzing round. Little touch then. 
it's usually better if they take it on the drop. You know, if they take it just as it's falling through the water so, so that they don't, don't really see the hook. Just miss seeing the hook. Lovely, right in that, right into that weedy area. Oh, straight into it. That's a bigger fish again. Didn't even give it time to settle. Just slightly bigger fish. I thought the bigger fish would come to this pellet. Just a bigger rud. They're lovely fish. They're just so aggressive when they're taking the bait. And there it's taken the pellet and there's the band, but it's perfectly hooked, you know, it wanted, wanted to take that bait, big rud, that beautiful fish. But the pellet band's still on there. So all you have to do is hook another pellet on. So, so I think they've just got a little bit damp, these pellets today, so... That was brilliant, straight in and it took it. Once you get the fish weaned onto whatever bait you're using, then you get a good chance of, of catching them. And if you look at it, really, if you look at that, it's quite a big hook sticking out of there. You'd think other fish would see that, but they don't. So the harder, tougher baits to, to eliminate the really small fish and to catch the slightly bigger ones, it's another good, good tip, something you need to, to think about. Two pouchfuls of pellet. It's all action day today. It's fantastic. Lots and lots of fish. And that just that sharp, when you get the bite, just a sharp sidewards, sideways movement. With two or three bites in, I know the pellet will still be fine. Look, the pellet's still on there, still fine. They're probably small fish that you miss. I think if, you, if a big fish takes it, you hook it. Ah, this is, a, I don't know what this fish is. It's a really big fish, it took it just took that pellet on the drop, but I just don't know what it is. It can't be a rud. It'd be a massive fish if it was. What it is? Up in the water on pellet. Just shows you sometimes fishing with pellet, you can catch bigger fish. Whatever this is, I think this is a good fish to end the programme with today. Oh, just see it come to the surface. It <laughs> It looks like a tench. Blimey, I could see the bait band just sticking out of its mouth. Oh, blimey. You can put so much pressure on these fish, though, when you're fishing with a waggler. Doesn't really get much chance. Yeah, look at that lovely tench to finish the program with. God, it must be probably about two pound. Just take that hook out. Up in the water on a banded pellet. How can that be? Lovely fish. These are more of a greeny, greeny gold colour. Terrific fish. Two pound. So today, I've tried to tell you a little bit about, or give you some of my waggler secrets. How to fish on the bottom for bigger fish, bream skimmers, such like, and then come up in the water and loose feed with maggot to catch lots of fish, lots of action rud. And then to finish off with, catch some bigger fish using banded pellet. So quite a few good tips and hints there on how to catch fish on a waggler. Thank you.